what's up, what's up? Just a quick podcast today. Man, a lot of a lot of stuff happened over the weekend. Man, oh man, oh man. So much happened over the weekend. So much to talk about. But I only have a little bit of time to get everything in. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Well, what's going on, everybody? My name is Lockout Man. Welcome to the Lockout Man podcast. Yes, sir. I am here again to give you whatever you want. So let me turn the music down and we can get right into it. Now, first thing first, look, my name is Lockout Man. My Gmail is LockoutManPodcast at gmail.com. If you guys have anything to say, anything to give, anything that you want me to talk about, you want to come on to the show and chop it up with me, come on and hit me up in the Gmail. That's LockoutManPodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and hit that bell and that all button so you can get all the content that I put out. Yeah, let's get into it, man. So let's couple of couple of topics. Couple of topics today. I'm gonna switch it up just a little bit. Let's talk about trucking for a little bit. Just just a little bit. Now, this past weekend, uh this past this this past Friday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Friday, something like that, man. I was parked over at this uh at this pilot flying J, I think. I think it was a flying J because it had a Denny's in there. But there's Denny's and pilots too, but there's more Denny's and in, in flying J's than it is pilots, right? But anyway, anyway, um your boy had a had an issue with with another trucker. I mean, I wouldn't say it was an issue. It was it was probably a non-starter. But, I mean, it goes to the question that was asked in the Facebook group. Why truckers act like assholes these days and times? And at first, at first I said to myself, like, you know, they probably have their reasons, you know, because new school truckers versus old school truckers, they're, we're a different breed. They was a different breed back in the day, and we're a different breed now. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, it, it was more of a brotherhood, you know, more of a trucking family of sorts. You know what I'm saying? Hey, brother, uh, you need some help over there? Or if you broke down, I'll make sure you get home. Or if you, or, you know, is this a good place to eat? Or just idle conversation, like, yo, how's your day going? Yo, it's going solid, you know, yada, yada, yada. But today's truckers, mm -mm. what you looking at? Uh, why, why you this? And why you saying hi? Or, or if, you know, if you need some help, I don't need no help. So I was at the, I was at the Flying J and I was on the phone. Now, mind you, I was outside and maybe I was a little loud, you know, while being on the phone. And that's understandable. But I didn't want to be in the bathroom talking while I'm, I'm, I'm on the phone. You know what I'm saying? So I was outside the bathroom, minding my own business, talking on the phone. So this, unfortunately, this Caucasian gentleman, OK, he comes out the bathroom and as he's coming out the bathroom, he's like literally eyeballing me, like looking at me like. So. I, I, I asked the question. Something wrong. You know what I'm saying? Something wrong. Uh, am I bothering you? Am I talking too loud? What? So. He comes walking up on me. I'm like, bro, it's his feet, man. You know, Corona still in existence. Just because a lot of places is open, Corona is still in existence, bro. So I don't know where you've been and I don't want what you got. So he goes like, what, something wrong or something like that? I mean, he's coming up to me cocky and shit. And like I said, I just asked a question like, bro, you, you, 
you eyeballing me like you want to do something. And I just want to make sure that you are right. You know what I'm saying? So as I go outside, <laughs> and let me tell you how small this trucking world is, because it's real small. This shit is small. You know, you could probably talk shit about somebody on the Internet today and probably run into their asses tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> ironically, this motherfucker was parked right next to me. So, of course, I'm coming outside. I'm still on the phone talking to, you know, talking to my people. And I'm, you know, walking up to my truck. And lo and behold, this motherfucker raised down the window. Like, I'm like, bro, you all right, man? I mean, like, yo, you, you something on your mind? Like, really? Is there something on your mind? So I, I don't know what, what today's truckers are. I, I don't know. I don't know the mindset of today's truckers, man. You know what I'm saying? The mindset of the old school truckers back in the day is totally different than the mindset of the new school truckers of today. You know what I'm saying? I don't get it. I don't get it and I don't understand it. So uh, let's let's keep a line with this with this trucking content, the trucking topic right quick. So uh I did an interview with uh with DS DSX DSX trucking. Good ass conversation. I can't I can't wait till that uh interview drops for you guys. But Jay Rich did a did a uh, Inst uh, was it an Instagram or was it a YouTube? I think it was a YouTube where she came on and talked about the conversation she had with him. And the topic was pop-up drivers. <laughs> pop-up drivers. He asked her, was she a pop-up driver? And she was like, what the fuck is a pop-up driver? And she he was like, well, it's these drivers that just pops up out of the blue like every time you turn on youtube there's a new driver that just pops up out of the blue and she was like well i don't know if i'm a pop-up driver but i've been driving for a while so i said to myself i was like huh pop-up drivers i you know what there there are a lot of drivers that gets or a lot of people that gets into trucking, but maybe not for good reasons. Now, again, back to the old school versus new school. You know what I'm saying? Old school drivers got into trucking because it was in their blood. Is it in your blood, though? You know, now I can understand if you grew up around trucking. Your father was a truck driver, your father's father was a truck driver, and his father before that was a truck driver. Or you grew up in in a trucking business. Your 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 family owns a, a trucking fleet and you just happen to grew up in it. And that's pretty much all you knew, you know, you went out with your father when he when he when he goes out, you know, you're five, six, seven years old and you're hanging out with your father and you take pictures in the cab and all this good stuff. So I guess it is in your blood if it's like that, if you grew up around trucking or you you inundated into trucking. Well, I got into trucking because my father drove. And his father drove before him. So they had a passion for it. They had a, it was, they had a mentality, a trucking family mentality for it. Not, not today's truckers though. Not, not today's truckers. Today's truckers, they, they, they are, like I said before, they, they are a totally different breed. They, they are. It's a, it's a totally different breed right now. So are, I do I agree that there's a lot of pop-up drivers? Yeah, I, I agree. I agree that there is a lot of pop-up drivers. It's just a lot of people that's getting into this industry just because 
they need a job. They need a job. Listen to what I'm saying. Let's listen to what I'm saying. They need a job. All right. These times right now, right now, right here. It's totally different than what it was back in the day. Back in the day, there was a lot of there was a lot of factory work. There was cars, uh, car factories, uh, uh, postal service that was hiring. And you retail was booming. Uh, and you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I grew up in the 80s, in the 90s. There was a lot of grocery store chains everywhere. And it was easy to, to apply and get a job. And luckily, if you was lucky, lucky enough, you can retire from said job. But you can't do that today. You can't do that today. There's all the retail stores that are open. They're, they're just small shops. And they're so small that they're not hiring people like they used to. And even the bit bot stores is not even hiring like they like they like they used to. You know, my son's girlfriend just got a job working for working for a grocery store at minimum wage. Minimum wage, part time. She's part time, but she's part time because, you know, she's a little entrepreneur herself, but she just need the extra money. But just imagine for all other people that's coming into this field, that's coming, that's coming out to work and they look at it like, yo, where, where to go, where to make this kind of money. Trucking. There it is. Go get your CDL. Go get your go go get your CDL and hop in the truck to make that money that you can't make nowhere else. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. People need a job, and that's the reason why they're getting into this trucking field. You got people that's coming out of school every week and you got people that's going to trucking schools through company paid schools every week. You got trucking companies every week that's that's trying to recruit new drivers every week. You got Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. You got all these companies that's going social media to bring in the people that need jobs to make that kind of money that that they can't make nowhere else. Where else can you make about a thousand a week? Where else can you make about fifteen hundred a week? Where else can you make uh make about nine hundred a week? Where? Where else? Where else can you make 50, 60, 70 cent a mile? Where else can you make that kind of money? Now, when you get into this field. Now, this field is not for everybody. I'm just saying it's not for everybody. There's a lot of stuff that you got to put in to it in order to make it through. Number one, you got to keep your DAT report clean. That's number one, because a lot of companies, not a lot, not to say a lot, but a lot of companies is looking at that DAT report. And if it ain't clean, you ain't working. You ain't getting the job. You got to keep your MVR clean. You got to keep it clean on driving on the CMV side and keep it clean on driving on the on your on your pass. I mean, on your personal side, because if you get a ticket on your personal side, then you got to let the company know that you got a ticket and that's going to interfere with the CSA. I'm just saying. A lot of a lot of drivers. A lot of drivers out here just don't just don't care anymore. They don't care about the industry. They don't have a passion for it. They just here to work, make their money and go home. They don't care. You know, now the old school drivers, they care about the industry. They want to band together and make the industry better. 
But you got to get the people that don't care to come along with you. And if they don't care, then that's going to be hard. Too many people is getting in the, into this trucking just for the sake of just for the sake of trying to make money. And I understand they trying to make money. They trying to, you know, take care of their families and all like that. But again, where else can you make the kind of money that you're making in trucking? That's why a lot of people do it. You got a lot of people that come in and say, yo, trucking saved my life, trucking this and trucking that. Yeah. Yeah. But you probably might would say the same if you would have got into a good job, say, uh, Ford, GM, Chrysler. You know, if you was working in the factories and stuff like that. Uh, Nestle, you know. Because when I got into Nestle, I said, Nestle saved my life. I started working at, at Nestle making $15 an hour. And I was there at Nestle. Well, technically, I worked at Nestle for two and a half years and been on, been on leave for about another two years. And when I finished out, I was close to $20 an hour. And I said back then, Nestle saved my life. But then I got back into my role service. And then I said, role service saved my life. You, you see where I'm going with this? Now, when I got into trucking, I never said trucking saved my life. You know what I'm saying? But for a few of you out there that has said trucking saved your life, I'm glad that it did because a few of you out there have came on and said, you know, y'all was y'all was y'all hit rock bottom and y'all didn't know what to do. Y'all ain't know where to make that kind of money. But you found it. It's here. It's now. It's trucking. But it's too many of y'all out here. I, I really hate to say that it's too many of y'all out here that's that don't need to be out here all right now don't get me wrong don't get me wrong <laughs> you guys don't some of you guys really don't need to be out here though all right and this is why Como se quedó aquí en el Jackie Robinson, muchacho. Ve. El Jackie Robinson es un parqueo. Totalmente. Miren. Un parqueo. Tenemos aquí. Miren el eticamiento. Ajustado. Ya los azul. Voy a cupir un azul de eso. Pero es una bestia grande, pues mira, mira a Tizán, que no cabe el camión. Y se metió la bestia eso. Companies. Now, now wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's, let's put it in perspective. What happened here? What happened here? Okay. What, what happened here? Maybe you got on the wrong, maybe you got on it and you didn't know. But from what I understand is that on that little thoroughway is no trucks, period. And there's a lot of signs that says no trucks, period. But the driver of that CR England truck. I don't know. I don't know. You see how that traffic is backed up, though? How are they going to get that truck off? I mean, wow. They're going to have to back traffic literally off so they can get that truck turned around and get it off the thoroughway. Trucking is not for everybody, y'all. You got to pay attention out here. 
bridge not if there's a sign that says low clearance and there's a lot of them in chicago if there's a bridge that says low clearance yo don't try don't take that chance don't take that chance it's not worth it see right now that brother is going to get a ticket he might lose his job and that's going to be on this DAC report That's going to be on his DAC report. So he's he's already messed up threefold. It's going to be on his DAC report. He's going to get a ticket and he's probably might he probably might lose his job. So what else what else is there to say about that situation right there? What else there's to say about that? Open that bad boy like a sardine. Jackie Robinson is a park. Totalmente. Miren. Un parque. Tenemos aquí. Miren el este camión. Ajustado. How how is he going to How can you explain that? You you really can't. How are you going to explain that to safety? I I I don't know. I I really like to be the fly on that wall. All right, so before we get on up out of here, man, there's another there's another topic I want to touch on. The state of emergency in in the world today is is ridiculous. And I, I just want to bring up the fact that there's a lot of people that's over here, that's over here rioting, that's over here looting, that's over here, quote unquote, protesting and stuff like that. What I want to know is, you know, everybody, everybody's over here protesting for for police brutality. And I get it. I got it. I understand it. You know. Black Lives Matter. You know what I'm saying? I, I understand. I, I support I, I support the movement. I support the movement. Black Lives Matter, you know. But where where's the movement that happened in Chicago? Five black kids was killed in Chicago. Two boys, 15 and 16, they was walking in the alley where somebody fired at them and they got they got shot. Uh, a 13 year old girl was killed. And a girl, another girl that was in her home. 15, uh, 15 and 16 was sitting on the porch. One of them got killed. And a three-year-old boy, a three-year-old boy was killed. Where's the, where's the protest for that? Where's the looting? Where's the rioting for that? Chicago had 104 shootings in one fucking day. Or not one day, over the weekend, over Father's Day weekend, my bad. Father's Day weekend. 14 dead. 5 I mean, now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I, you know, it is what it is, man. I'm, I'm just curious to know where's where's everybody at? You know? Uh, today's Monday. I don't I don't see no I don't see no no. No, nobody rioting for them. Nobody, nobody protesting for them. Nobody went back to the nobody went back to the business and burned it down 
a business that didn't have nothing to do with with that particular incident that happened in the parking lot. Five kids, five kids. Violence, gun violence, black on black violence, white on white violence, white on black violence. I don't get it, man. We, you know, what is this? A pick and choose type of situation? Y'all spin the wheel or something? Today is going to be bam. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going we gonna to protest in, 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 in this right here. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Where is the justice for this young lady right here? Where is the justice for this young lady right here? And good afternoon once again to you. I'm Liz Cho. Shirlene is off this afternoon. I'm David Navarro. We begin this half hour with shocking video. A 15-year-old girl brutally attacked and robbed by a gang of teenage boys in Brooklyn. You can see uh, they are punching and kicking her until she lost consciousness. The gang of boys even stole the shoes off of her feet and her debit card. I went to news reporter Jim Dolan is live in Crown Heights with the very latest on the search for the suspects. Jim. The outlet. Where's the outrage over that? Where Where is the outrage over that? You know, where's the outrage over that? The, a young girl got got brutally beaten un fucking content uh, content conscience Let, let's see it again without me being in the way and good afternoon once again to you. I'm Liz Cho. Shirlene is off this afternoon. I'm David Navarro. We begin this half hour with shocking video. A 15-year-old girl brutally attacked and robbed by a gang of teenage boys in Brooklyn. You can see uh, they are punching and kicking her until she lost consciousness. The gang of boys even stole the shoes off of her feet and her debit card. I went to news reporter Jim Dolan is live in Crown Heights with the very latest on the search for the suspects. Jim. Somebody explain that to me, please. Please explain it. Pretty please. I need to know. I need to know. My camera is all acting up today and I do not understand why. So it is it is time for a new camera. Because ever since I've been using this new cord. I, I don't know. It's just. I don't know. It's just fucking up. But somebody, where's, where's, where y'all at for her? A gang of kids, man. A gang of kids brutally beat this girl. From Liz Cho, Shirlene is off this afternoon. I'm David Navarro. We begin this half hour with shocking video. A 15-year-old girl brutally attacked and robbed by a gang of teenage boys in Brooklyn. You can see uh, they are punching and kicking her until she lost consciousness. And this fool took off her shoes, man. Where's, where's the protest for that? Look, we need to do better. We need to be better. You know, we need to we need to be better. We need to come together. You know, people people as a whole, the the whole trucking community needs to do better. And the whole community that's outside of trucking, we need to do better, man. We need to do better. Well, all right, that's it. That's it. I'm done. 
I'm done. You you guys like content like this and more. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more content like this. Yo, if you guys want to get at me, just get at me in the Gmail. If y'all have any news or anything like that y'all want me to peep out, hit me in the Gmail. Lockout Men Podcast at gmail.com. That is what's up. I appreciate you guys being here with me today. Yo, you guys have a blessed day. And we about to get on up out of here. Y'all stay fresh for 2020. Peace.